One of the things I've come to learn to embrace truly is the ability to have practical skill set to deal with life challenges, especially when it has to do with emotions. Because coming from where I come from, from Ghana, from Africa, my country, some of those practical skills were never demonstrated to me as a girl and even as boy children in my community. I want to share today a few pointers to the journey to back to the self, how to ask for help and stay within community so you're not depending on one sole person or just yourself to emotional regulate. Like I always say, prayer is great, right? God and therapy, God and therapy, prayer is great. But what are some of the practical things to do as well to stay grounded, to stay emotionally regulated and set boundaries and stay within those boundaries and recognize when other people are not like you and know what your bandwidth is and learn to distance yourself from those people who might rather co-regulating with you or kind of meeting you or adding on to something you're already working on regarding emotions rather than them taking away or drying you up or making your emotions worse. Recognizing those people, high conflict, toxic, difficult, narcissistic personalities and set those boundaries, close their doors and set it closed and not wax and wait on that. Because not everybody is the same wavelength of journey as you are as you do this healing. So how does it look like to have a journey back to the self, to the within, without having that emptiness gap within yourself and looking for other people to feel it or work to feel it or a career to feel it or another degree to feel it or to feel it or a relationship or a partner or a friend to feel it for you or a church to feel it for you. How do you meet those needs? How do you meet those needs when... The rubber meets the rope and you're really struggling emotionally. How do you all show up for yourself and build that relationship in the, in the absence of other people? Um, one of the ways is to recognize. Recognizing is the one thing, right? Recognizing where you are emotionally is really great. Like a really great step um to help you minimize reactivity when you are in those places of being triggered giving yourself lots and lots of grace to know what you're knowing and knowing your bandwidth of tolerance of distress the window of tolerance of distress like this is what i can tolerate and making peace with it and pre-planning what you're gonna do when you get to that Place is also important, seeking support from other people, telling them, like, listen, I'm struggling right now. I'm triggered. I'm going through grief. This is an anniversary of the loss of maybe a marriage, maybe a child, maybe a parent. You're going through that trigger mode. Holidays are coming. You're feeling sad. Just knowing, because that person you love so much is no more there. And it's a reminder every day of the void that's there. How do you meet those needs by telling the people, hey, listen, I will need you to call me. Like really learning to communicate your needs, but with safe people, trusting people, not people who are going to re-trigger you, add it worse or make you feel bad. It's not worth it to go. It will make it worse. They're not safe, trusting spaces to go to, to meet your needs. So as much as you're self-regulating and meeting those needs, Finding those core people you can rely on, trusting safe space, safe people. You can reach out to, to say, listen, I'm really struggling. Uh, holidays are coming. Thanksgiving, New Year, Christmas is coming. I lost my mom. I lost my dad. I lost my child. My child is no longer speaking to me. I went through a separation, a divorce, I didn't want it, and I'm still struggling with the sadness of it. I'm really struggling in my relationship, I feel sad a lot. My partner is being really mean to me. I'm hugging myself, I'm loving myself, I'm pouring into myself, I'm doing therapy, but I still have this void within me. How do I 
help feel better without going to drugs or alcohol, avoiding or overworking or just going through life, just being high functioning, depressed or anxious, anxious. One of the ways is like, why not say find a therapist, a counselor, a really trusting friend who might be in the same journey of healing as yourself and really spending a few times with them and saying, listen, I really need for you maybe just five minutes and promise them you're not going to overwhelm them with like frequent calling because you're aware you don't want to overwhelm other people while you're trying to do your healing. Like if I can talk to you maybe once or twice in a day, maybe 10, 15 minutes to just co-regulate with you. And if you need likewise, I'll be there too because you don't want to pour into people and not have to be poured into to really be in that space of vulnerability and knowing that it's okay to seek that support. But you see how I'm saying it? Just asking that person, like, can I have a call with you for 10, 15 minutes, once or twice a week? That way I can talk through this because I'm really needing that support right now. Hey, can we go out to hike like 20, 30 minutes an hour once? A month or so, this will help me so much as we approach this difficult season. So, you know, like, we planning. And even with that, talk like that, I think in many cases, it helps you feel better, feel supported, feel that you're not alone, which is what it's all about. So, knowing that you're not alone, co-regulating, finding your support system, keeping that support system going, is a key to really pre-planning to co-regulate emotions and start to heal and Heal yourself for the things that maybe your parent, your mom, your dad didn't provide for you. Your caregivers, your primary caregivers didn't provide for you. Didn't really help you co-regulate when you were a child. They neglected your emotional state, your emotional... Um, I'm trying to like make it so women just like understand a little bit of like just to sympathize. It's like we're, we're like sport fishermen. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Men like to fish. And if sport fishing is different from catching fish for food you just get it you get it you catch it and you you know you you show your friends because you want them to know that you you can catch fish you take a couple of pictures so you can show people the fish that you have the ability to catch and then you release it back into the water but a lot of women in here, you have boyfriends or husbands, you a fish that jump back on the boat. <laughs> and just was like flapping, looking at me like. Hi, I was wondering if you're gonna be fishing here again next week, like. Yeah, for other fish. Get off my boat. <laughs> Is that how you treat all the fish? You'd be like, oh, God damn. <laughs> nope, I'm sorry, sweetie. You're the last fish I ever wanted to be with. Now you're stuck. You're stuck with the last fish who was loving you and fighting hard to be on your boat. Then she got comfortable, and now she, instead of doing this, she's like, so... We've been together for like... A year now, why do you still have a boat? You'd be like... So what's she trying to say? I can't catch fish no more? Why do you need to catch a fish? Because if I lose my ability to catch fish, then you're not going to find me sexy no more. So you got to smell fish on me so that you know I can catch fish so you can act right. <laughs> 